Good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for your patience as we dealt with uh, some technical difficulties. And because they are recording, I do have to talk into the mic, but it will not project out to you, so it's a little awkward, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> so, all right, welcome. Uh, my name is Amanda Nolasco. I am the counselor facilitator for CTE for the Phoenix Union High School District. I am Latanya Blakely. I'm the post-secondary articulation specialist for the Phoenix Union High School District. And so Latanya and I are excited to be here today to tell you about how we have kind of taken the MTSS model or the three-tiered approach that we use in counseling for our comprehensive program and how we've used that same framework um, around our college application campaign and FAFSA events. So trying to really break that down to make it... Um, so we're uh, reaching all of our students, but then also providing the individual and um, support that they need as they're going through the process of the college application campaign or completing their FAFSA. So in looking at our district, just a little bit of background on our district for those of you that don't know, this is our, uh, our vision of preparing every student for success in college career um, and life. And so obviously, getting them into their next venture after high school, whether that be the university, the community college, vocational school, military, straight to the workforce, apprenticeship, whatever that is, that is our goal with our students. Um, we are a very large district, which I think some of you are aware of, but I don't know if you understand really the size of it as we uh, are around Metro Phoenix. So we have, um, a lot of different options for our students within our school system. So we do have our, our comprehensive high schools, but then we also have a bunch of other options for students that might not fit into the large comprehensive school. We have four specialty schools, um, Franklin Police and Fire, uh, Wilson College Preparatory, Bioscience, and Phoenix Coding Academy. So those are our small schools that um, at full capacity have about 400 students, each just with specific focus uh, for those students. Um, <clears throat> we have two micro schools within our district. So we have a gifted and talented academy that is located in Maryvale High School. And then we also have a Montessori, a Montessori school with Camelback High School. Um, we have three support schools. So if our students are needing extra assistance depending on their needs, we have those small schools. Desi Dorada is our school for ESS students that are under the um, ED label. Uh, we have students at um, Bostrom, which is one of our alternative schools. So it's a smaller environment for kids that maybe just need some more one-on-one -on -one support. And they're just needing a little bit more uh, academic TLC than the large comprehensive campus can offer. And then we have Linda Abril Educational Academy, which is our, our, our high school for our older students. So maybe they're... Um, 17, 18, 19, they've left school, maybe they need to re-enter, so we have a great place for them with students their age, and again, that one-on-one -on -one kind of support for them. We recently launched our virtual academy, so that's exciting, and I think I saw the email today, we're up to 101 students who have enrolled in that since December, uh, January when we opened it. So we're excited to offer that option for our students, as we know a lot of them just need um, a different type of learning environment if they cannot get to school. Um, and then our college and career magnet is uh, Metro Tech, so our, our CTE-based school, but also is a college prep school as well. When we look at our district, we are a union district, so we are not a K through 12. We get our students starting at ninth grade. So, and we know that that's a challenge um, <clears throat> because we don't have control over what happens before they get to us. We do have great articulation with our partner districts, but as you can see, there's 13 of them. And so trying to get everybody on the same page is sometimes a challenge, but we work really well and communicate and collaborate well with them. Um, but that's over 100 district schools that we're looking at as students are coming to us, and then that's not including uh, over 75 charters that could be sending their kids to us. So, you know, we get them in ninth grade, we have four years. Um, and then, so we, we have to have a little bit of a different approach than if we had a unified district. Um, and then this is just a map of our, our partner districts, but our district does span 220 square miles. So it's large. We go all the way from South Phoenix up to Central Phoenix, all the way out to the west side, and then east to Camelback. So it's a very large geographic region that we are serving. Um, we are very proud of our students and, and the differences and the diversity that they bring. 
um, over 74 uh, primary home languages. I think at Alhambra High School alone, they have over 50. So our students are coming um, from all over the world to our schools, and we need to meet their needs. 81% um, Hispanic, with 84% of our students living in poverty. We don't say this and, and, and bring this slide, and our superintendent uses all the time, not to say what their deficit is, but these are strengths for our students. This is where they build resilience and grit, and they want to achieve great things, and we are there to support them. Um, and then here's just some other data of how we've been moving forward um, with our graduation um, rates um, increasing. We're seeing um, an increase in the number of scholarship dollars that our students are receiving, of a pretty low dropout rate, and then our students are matriculating to great universities, um, not just here in state, but we're, ha we're sending students all over uh, the country. Okay. Do you want to do the numbers sure. or do you want me to? I've been talking about all right, so this is like our breaking news numbers because I received some of them yesterday. So we've had a 31% increase in our FAFSA applications from 16 when um, we went full speed ahead with FAFSA campaigns and dedicated our, much of our school year to it and a lot of our efforts. So there's been a 31% increase of just raw numbers from 16 to 17. 26% um, per increase in the amount of students enrolling into Arizona State University. This is, it, we're really proud of this. We have great partnerships, more on that later, but we have great partnerships um, both with the community and with Arizona State University. This is our breaking news stat that we got, I got at four o'clock yesterday. So in 2018, so those graduates, we had 437 um, students, Obama and CAG packaged at this point. So class of 2019, they're not graduated yet, 603. So we know the Obama scholarship doesn't speak to achievement per se. It's, you know, your income levels, but we're getting the kids through the process, through verification. So we're doing a great job at that. And so last year we had 437 kids at this time, completely packaged, ready to go for Arizona State. This year at, we're at 723 with about nine weeks to go in the school year, and we're gonna have some pushes to get over the finish line. We have 1,209 kids admitted into ASU as of last night. 723 of them are packaged, ready to go. So I'm super, super excited about that. Yeah. <laughs> and let me say this, because there are district counselors from Phoenix Union in this room. Thank you for your hard work, because that's all of them. I know, we, in the last couple years, this is only my third year in the district, we have put a lot of pressure and expectations on our counselors and we, they rise to the challenge and they are doing amazing work and our, our kids and our communities are reaping the benefit. This is, this is, I mean, this huge 723 students that are going to ASU at bottom, to, I mean, tuition free at least. A lot of them are getting, you know, a lot more. Um, so what we've done with the college application campaign in our FAFSA events is kind of model it around this MTSS system that we use when we look at our overall uh, uh, comprehensive counseling program. So I did take this image. Um, it's from uh, Hatching Results. So for you guys that know Trish, Trish Hatch in the counseling world, this is kind of the model that we talk about at how do we build a comprehensive program in three tiers to make sure that we're reaching the needs of all students, but then also providing those supports as needed. So we've kind of adopted this model um, as we look at solely the college application campaign and our FAFSA events, where tier one is focused on district and school-wide activities that include all students, Tier two gets into small groups and some more individual help as needed for students that need that extra support. And then tier three gets really into that individual, that one-on-one. -on -one. And so a lot of this happens, A, with the hard work of our counselors, but B, with the community partners and support that we have. And so without all of those pieces and uh, you know campus support, administrative support, district support, without all those pieces together, this cannot happen. Because it's, it's a lot. When you're, when you're organizing a, a school-wide event for, you know, at Trevor Brown, how many seniors do you have at Trevor Brown? Right, 700 seniors. When you're looking at a school-wide event, that's a lot of logistical um, kind of things to check off, check off the list. 
So tier one, as we look at what we're providing to all students, is tier one, when we started this work a couple years ago, we knew we needed an awareness campaign. So we know the FAFSA kind of challenges started a couple years ago in our district because of a grant that we received to increase our FAFSA completion numbers. So what we did was we knew we needed to get awareness out to our, our students and our community and our parents. And it started with this, um, with four campaigns that we had. We had a FAFSA campaign, a hashtag I am what college looks like, a four year plan, and then a tuition free program campaign. So if we, we had decided and we talked about our counselors were well versed in all of this information, but if our teachers and our other staff members are not, then the work cannot be completed and it cannot be a whole school support. So we knew we needed to get some information out there. So um, the person who had LaTanya's position previously, Dolores, she paired up with a graphic design student from Betty Fairfax High School and they created these ad campaigns. So all of these posters that you'll see are student driven work um, from a CTE student and he was amazing. So our first one was just information about FAFSA and getting the word out that kids needed to fill it out. And so I always laugh because Dolores went to um, Vincent with some ideas and he was like, yeah, miss, those are bad. <laughs> like, kids don't like that. No, that's not going to work at all. So she said, fine, tell me, design me something that's going to work. And this is what he came up with. So these are two examples of this and they were all themed around social media. So there's, I think, two or three more within those. So you will see these all around our high schools, but then other community partners have picked up the payment for those and you're, you'll probably see them in other schools in Arizona um, as well. So that was kind of our first thing is just letting them know that the, the FAFSA is out there and we need to complete it. And these posters are campus wide. They need, they're in classrooms, hallways. I, don't, I go to every school in our district and I see them everywhere, which is fantastic. Um, this was our I Am What College Looks Like campaign. So kids need to see themselves going somewhere else after high school. And so what Vincent came up with with this campaign was these are all selfies of graduates of them taking pictures of themselves on their current college campus. And so this is actually Vincent on the left, the student that designed the whole campaign. So he was in our version 2.0. Um, but basically what it, it has on there, the pictures are a little hard to see, but it will say uh, where they're going, uh, what they're studying, and then what high school they came from. And so Dolores and Vincent did a really good job of trying to find a wide range of where students were, from private schools to in-state schools to community college. We have a student who, from Trevor Brown, that was at the Air Force Academy. She's taking a selfie of herself flying a jet. Like, it's super cool. Um, I have down there, um, this is the link to our web page that shows all of the posters um, so that you can see those. And then what we started and we need to continue the work is the backstory of like a paragraph or two of that student's story and how they got to where they are. So you can read their bio and, and what they've been doing. So these are all over our campuses as well because our students need to see that students from Phoenix Union go to great places and then they can see that in themselves. And as we expand, they're all, these posters are starting to pop up in our partner schools in the, in the middle schools. So we have an eighth grade articulation specialist. And so what she's doing is researching backward where they went to middle school. And then we pull the posters and then we take them to Isaac or Julian or wherever that, whatever middle school they um, matriculated up to. And they hang them in the, in, the, in the hallways there so that the kids see not just when they get to ninth grade, but it's all the way through from seventh to seven to 12. Um, and I know LaTanya is working on getting them out in the community as well. So our public libraries, um, offices of elected officials, just different areas, <laughs> different areas of where we can have these posters. Um, what was the story of the grandmother that saw her son? Our grandson? So my very, I've been in this job three months. I just took over the day after, the Monday after Thanksgiving. So my very first email was, and I came in and the office had been abandoned because Dolores moved on. And there's posters everywhere. And I'm like, wait, wait, okay, where am I going to put these posters? And my very first email as the, as the post-secondary articulation specialist is a grandmother who works at Maryville High School. 
and said, I saw my son, my grandson on a poster. Can I get a copy? I was like, oh, sure, I'll run you down. How many you want? I'm thinking two or three. She's like, 40. I need 40 copies. His name's Alante Battle. I was like, yeah, he's handsome. Yes, thank you. That's my baby. So my very first day on the job, I had 40 posters and on, on out to 59th Avenue to Maryville High School. That's great to see that, you know, when people see their, their family members in those. Um, another thing um, that we worked on, and this is something that came like a year after those first posters, was what does the four-year plan look like depending on what pathway you want to go for highly selective university, in-state university, and community college? So kids need to start thinking about this, obviously, the minute they get to us, right? Ninth grade schedules can impact where you decide or where you can go apply for. And so this was created again by Vincent. We gave him just the information and he created this wonderful poster. Um, and so we have pushed these down into our ninth grade classes and then also into our partner districts so that they're seeing this uh, from the minute they enter our schools. They know exactly what that plan needs to look like. And then we do have a very basic black and white copy of this so that it's easy to um, um, copy and give out to people when we're at events. Another thing that we worked on was we really needed to get the word out about the tuition-free programs that are within our state universities. Um, when Obama and CAG came out, people did not believe that they were real. So we were having to educate our staff because we would meet with students and say, okay, based upon this, you're, you're gonna be CAG or Obama eligible. And then they would go back to their classrooms and their teachers would say, no, that's not a thing. That's not, that can't happen. You should just go to community college. And so we were having to, to um, educate our whole staff on these programs that yes, they are real, and yes, our kids are going to ASU for free. Um, I, ASU, we're seeing a flip. So Phoenix College used to be our number one place where students were going. ASU is probably gonna surpass that here coming up soon, just because of the packages that our students are receiving through financial aid. And so these posters have really been great. They're in all of our AVID classes. They're in English, math. We've put them out district-wide into like ninth and 10th grade classes for students to get that uh, information and, and teachers. Okay, so when we look at tier one in terms of whole school, we've got an aware, we have our awareness campaigns out. So we just are, are working on that aspect and, and those um, have been great. But as we look at tier one in terms of how are we reaching all of our students on our campus, with a school that has 700 seniors, we can't expect counselors to meet one-on-one -on -one with every kid to walk them through this process. It's not, it's not time manageable, it's not efficient. So a lot of our schools are doing senior assemblies. This is the kickoff for the senior year, and I'm sure a lot of you do the same things, but it helps when the principal is standing in front of the senior saying, we value this. This is what we want for you. These are the, gonna be the expectations for you of this school year. You're going to fill out a college application. We're going to help you with your FAFSA. Whatever the next step is, we're going to be with you through that. And so it really, really helps when you have your administrator giving that, that message. So this kind of kicks off the campaign season. Um, and these are usually done late August or early uh, September where they're hosting these events. This is on top of our counselors still doing individual senior check-in meetings with students. So we kind of hit those uh, twofold. Then as we look at tier one also, we are um, doing, we have been doing the college application campaign for years. And so this is something that we continue to do. So all of our students, well pretty much the month of September. Month of September. Month of September, our schools are all doing their college application campaigns. They look a little bit different on every campus. Um, with as large as we are and as, as different as our schools are, we do value autonomy and letting the schools decide what model works best for them. So for instance, some of them just do like bring in English classes and they do them through the English. Some bring in history and they bring in the history. Some do an extended advisory period. Uh, some, uh, like Central does what we call a one and done. They do college application campaign and FAFSA campaign together, and they block off three hours. And then everybody at the school has a job in doing that. So it really just depends on what works best for you and your campus and your needs. 
That, the one and done works for Central because they have one-to-one -one access computers for their students. Trevor Brown, it doesn't work for because they have 700 seniors. So it needs to be just a, you know, a little bit different. And that's okay, every school can look different. We are not into dictating or mandating this is how you should have to do it. We respect the school and, and their desire to have some freedom and some individuality to make it work for their students. One thing that I loved this year, so this is a picture from Camelback's campaign this year. And one of the counselors at Camelback had uh, reached out to one of our executive directors and said, hey, do we have any things for like picture frames? You know, the kids love to take pictures of themselves. They love for you to take pictures and then they love to see themselves on social media. Okay, um, and now, you know, when you take a picture of them, they're like, can you just airdrop that to me right now so I can have it? They, they really do love it. And so she reached out to, um, to our maintenance um, department, and our maintenance department, turnaround, made all of these wonderful, beautiful wooden picture frames for every single one of our campuses. So each campus now has two of these frames. And we made them generic so they could be used for multiple events throughout the school year. So they added the I applied little tag on there for the college application campaign, but it could be you know, individualized and modified for every um, event. And they're, they're beautifully painted, they have these great handles on the back, and the kids have really, really um, loved them. So every school received two of these. And so that's a way that you can get other departments within your district involved in this campaign and they can feel a part of it. They reached out to us, you know, and said, oh, we would love to, to do that for you. So it was, um, that's great. And the kids, they love it. Um, some other things that are happening on tier one as we look at one of our small schools, Bioscience, is she hosts what's called into a, a launch to college in the summer. So because they are a small school, um, it's pretty much mandatory for all of their seniors. They come a week before school starts and they have different workshops and activities where they can get information from different schools, not just in-state schools. They're filling out their applications and they're getting started. So students at Bioscience um, are getting all of this done the summer prior to entering their senior year. Last year what they did was they also invited some other students from other schools to come to the event as well. And um, it was great. So these students are getting a, a kickstart and a head start into this process. Um, but again, we consider this tier one because all students at that school are participating in this event. Um, another with tier one that we, for all students, is after we have our college application campaign, now in October we do FAFSA events. So every school is hosting a FAFSA event similar to a college application campaign where all, you know, pretty much all students are, uh, have opportunity to participate in this process. Um, and again, it looks different on every school. Some do them in the morning, some do them in the afternoon, some go into the night. It really just depends on what works for that school. What's been great is um, all of our schools, our large schools, have started doing what we call FAFSA fiestas. And so students are completing their FAFSAs during the school day, and parents are coming to school and working with them. So Camelback High School had tons of parents show up um, at their event. So it's, it's, it's worked really, really well. Um, but what happens is the students will fill out their FAFSA, in a classroom or start the process or get where they are. And then once they've gotten to as far as they can or they have submitted, then they go to another part of campus where there is a fiesta, basically a party. There's taco vendor, there's food, um, sometimes music is playing, pinatas. I mean, every campus like does it up differently. And so it's, it's a really, really great event. Um, to bring in other areas of the campus as well. So like Central High School, their AVID students and their um, student government are the ones that run the whole party. So it's not just put on the counselors. It can't just be your counselors doing this work because they're usually in the classrooms working with students on FAFSAs during this time. So we need to rely on other members of the school community to do this. And so that's great then our underclassmen are seeing what's gonna happen for them as they become seniors and what they can expect. And it's a lot of fun. Um, we do have donations um, 
Thriving Together has paid for the food for these events, so that's how it happens. And then we also feel really good because we're using a local um, vendor that hosts all of the events. So we're helping a small business in our community um, did all 10, nine or 10 of the parties this year. Somebody got a job. Oh, yes, and one of our students actually got a job as a result of the FAFSA Fiesta. So uh, the culinary program at Camelback used their students to help feed the students through the line. And then the caterer was so impressed with the work that he offered her a job on the spot, and now she's working for them. So it's just utilizing your different groups on your campus to help run uh, these events. These events cannot happen without our community partners. So we have offered a lot of training for our counselors in terms of FAFSA, but we still need people that are experts in that area. So we could not do this without the community partners of our university partners, community college, be a leader, thriving together, all of these places that bring their experts to us to help our students. It's not possible without them. And so um, finding whatever that is in your community helps these events. Definitely with the FAFSA because they come at you every year and you think you've heard every scenario and then there's a new one and you're like, oh, I don't know. And I'll be like, Carla, who do I call? Who do I call to answer this question? I'm not sure. But it's okay if we don't have the answers for everything. That's why we bring in experts that fill our deficiencies and that's okay. And I'm going to do tier two and tier three. So we've done the college application campaign. We've done the FAFSA fiestas. And now we're about mid-year. So this is starting November, December. So once you do that, everybody who all the counselors in the room know that the kids have a problem going back, checking ASU, checking their portals to see if there's more work to be done because there's usually IDs to be shown, additional forms, um, verification happens. So we do next step events. Next step events, um, they, ASU and Be A Leader are our biggest partners on this. ASU will send their admissions team, Be A Leader, has specialists at our school, and we'll, we work off of our list and just bring kids in, log in. Can you just log into your ASU? Can you log into your Maricopa? Can you log in and show us where you're at? Oh, you're in verification. Let me, let me tell you what this means. Um, I did a next step event. We had a good time at Camelback because I'm kind of loud and I enjoy having fun. Every time somebody logged in to ASU and it showed that they had been awarded the Obama, we were like, yay, I'm going to get a gong or something and do like a car dealership next year. Um, we do advisory lessons about what's next. Make sure you're always checking. Just because we don't call you in for next steps doesn't mean you yourself can't log in and check your own things um, because there's a, you know, we have all of these events, but we also have to teach the kids how to be independent. So we're starting to teach an advisory, you know, let's look at this. Don't forget housing, enrollment deposits, sign up for orientation. So we start to teach lessons to check things and to stay on top of your own stuff. <laughs> oh, yes. Al I feel so bad. I feel guilty. So Alhambra had a next step event. And it was, the same me it was the same day I had a conference of some sort, somewhere I was. And so that morning, I text the instructional leader at Alhambra. I was like, are you guys going to be OK? And she's like, yeah, we got two volunteers. I've never done this before, but I think we're OK. I so I get out of the conference early. I haven't had lunch. I was like, they got two volunteers. This is going to be all right. I call Alhambra when I get back to the office. They were like, oh my God, there were 100 kids and we had two volunteers. It got a little shaky, but we're okay. I was like, I am so sorry. <laughs> she said, oh no, 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 you didn't know, but 100 kids showed up to do their next step events. And usually, sometimes it's like pulling teeth to get the kids, you know, after a while you saturate them with call slips and text messages. So sometimes they get a little deaf. So it was good to know that they're paying it like the lessons and advisory because Alhambra does a lot of teaching in small groups and advisory through the student study groups and everything that that message got through to them I'm coming and so I was wondering how did you get 100 kids in because I know the compute what the computer situation is at every Phoenix Union school now like where did you get 100 seats but they did it and they got through it and they so we're going to see a jump in their FAFSA completion and the next report ACT boot camp I'm so excited I had this meeting yesterday. So this is sponsored by the Burton Family Foundation. None of this would be possible without the Burton Family Foundation. 
So we do two sessions in the summer of ACT tutoring. The foundation has been very generous. They give us, um, they pay for food, tutors, and we, we have the kids sign up for the ACT, the June test. So we'll have two sessions this year. So the first cohort that's going to go through are juniors that tested ACT in February with Phoenix Union. And they're going to come in summer school for one week at either Metro Tech or Trevor Brown High School, and they're going to get tutoring. And so the way that the program runs is they take a test in the morning, then they review the next day what they did. They take a practice test. And then they go through math, sci math, science, reading English, and then Be a Leader comes and gives a session. College Depot comes out and gives info about colleges. So they learn a lot. The Burton Family Foundation also sponsors an HBCU trip for about 30 of our African-American students to go tour a few of the HBCUs down south. But we want to teach the kids nothing is free in life. So they must attend ACT camp. Um, I think I'm going to rename it because boot camp seems a little harsh when it's an opportunity. And like everything's, everything's like a boot camp. It's, so we'll be, if anybody has any fancy names that they would like to recommend, I'm here. I'm here all day. And then, oh, can we go back to ACT? And then, so a new feature of this is because... I was really, really charming with the Burton Family Foundation. We're going to do a second camp in January. <laughs> and so the second camp will be five Saturdays starting when we get back for second semester. And those will be juniors in that camp. So they've never tested. And so we're going to run right into when we test as Phoenix Union in February. So I, I can't wait to see what happens with that. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's very easy, I think, for us to stand up here and say this is so great because we have a financial backer that supports all this. Um, and I know for my current role, I'm in Phoenix Union, but my previous role when I was in a different district, we didn't have this type of financial support, but we still ran these programs for our students. We just relied heavily on our teachers and the kindness of our teachers to want to improve our ACT score. So it really just depends on your school and the culture and what you have going there um, in terms of that. So at my previous site, we would give every uh, junior a practice ACT test one day. And then we had a teacher that would go through all that data and pull it out and of where their strengths and weaknesses are, and then we would offer um, Saturday sessions to those students over an eight-week period. And then those, and then we had our teachers that would come in and teach. Um, I think it, we kept it to like three hours each Saturday, and they would focus on specifically kids were grouped based on their strengths and weaknesses and where they needed to move forward on that. So. This, this, this is great because we have a, a backer, but there are ways to make it work at your school if you don't have that. So it's just uh, relying on your, your teachers uh, to help you out with that. And I've talked to one of the, two, because all of the tutors are teachers in Phoenix Union, and I was, ta I was talking to the person that kind of heads up the program, the lead teacher in the summer program, and we were talking about, you know, I got this grant. And she says, yeah, I don't mind taking money because I've been doing this for 20 years for free every day after school and every Saturday. So this work was going on with our teachers, you know, far before we, you know, ventured out in the community to ask for help, and they were doing it for free. And so I think we're almost like back paying and honoring their work now. <laughs> All right, be a leader, such a tremendous help to us. Um, they are on each and every one of our BIT campuses. They provide one-on-one -on -one support. Um, tier three is like the one-on-one, -on -one, so everybody has that student that you say, Timmy, fill out your FAFSA. Timmy hasn't listened. You get to the FAFSA event, and Timmy's in there with his English class. Timmy's on YouTube. Timmy's on Snapchat. Then... Uh, you know, we get the finish line list and the counselor looks. I was just a counselor three months ago. Timmy, you still haven't done your FAFSA. Aren't you going to ASU? Mm -hmm. Come on, let's sit down and do this. Timmy doesn't show up on your appointment. So then we have Be a Leader to come and get him because those are the kids and the counselors know there's always those kids that come in on Cinco de Mayo, May 5th. Hey, I'd like to apply for college and do my FAFSA. And you are, and your mind is on to next year or on to end of year activities. Um, they give us verification support. Verification is a tough one um, because we have so many Pell eligible students. We have 
so many kids that go through the verification process. I've learned so much about verification just from being a leader alone, but um, one of my goals is to seal up, they call that the leaky pipe where you get them in the FAFSA and then verification happens and then they don't show up to school because they were never packaged. So we're looking at ways to um, tighten that system. And so some of our partners on that, ASU, Be a Leader, Maricopa Community College, College Depot, Sometimes kids just don't want the help at school and they're a little more independent. So you go, go to Burton Bar, second floor, and they'll do that. I, I that um, for those of you that are here in Maricopa, um, College Depot is a great resource if you're not using it. Um, and so you can, they will um, set up one hour appointments so that if a student needs that extra assistance and A, you don't know the answer to the question or how to help them or you feel like you're calling uh, you know, the federal government and you're never getting an answer or you're just, you don't have the time because you have 500 kids on your caseload that you're trying to, to manage, they are great at doing, and they'll do um, evening and weekend appointments. So it's very family friendly. So if you're not utilizing those services, it's great. You can just have the kid call from your office, set up the appointment, and they go, and then maybe just do a, ch a quick follow-up with them. Were you able to get your uh, questions answered? Or if they're not wanting to go to college, they are now doing a great thing with apprenticeship programs. So if you have a student that really wants to go into the trades and they feel like they're being maybe lost in this college application and FAFSA process because it's not what they wanna do, but you don't have that expertise, they have somebody on staff now that's totally dedicated to helping students get into apprenticeship programs. And so that is amazing because we, we know a lot of our kids go to college and we know um, they're thriving there, but we have some that that's not their pathway or that's not what they want to do and we need to support those students as well. And we need people in the trades and the skilled trades as well. It's called Craft a, Craft a Profession, um, nicknamed Trade Depot by everyone else, but it's official title is Craft a Profession and they're working with parents also because you find that bias of no, my son's not going to be a mechanic. And so they work with parents to you know show them like there's money in this if this is what your child wants to do. Okay. I think one thing that is so great about these tier three supports is it definitely takes a lot of pressure off of our counselors who are already feeling pressure in so many different areas um, that they're responsible for on their campus. Um, especially in April, if you are a district where as counselors you're coordinating testing, you're gonna be inundated here in April. And then you've still got kids coming in who are in verification or don't know what they need to do. So it's really nice for us to say, okay, matriculation specialists on our campus, here's our list of kids that need the extra support that I can't give them right now because I'm doing uh, 15 other things. But we don't want that student to be lost. And so that's where this tier three, that one-on-one -on -one with our partner support is crucial to our students finishing up that process um, who are not like in, you know, they're just a little bit late to the game. Um, we know kids get burnout. We know they start to freak out towards the end of their senior year. You know, school has been a safe zone for a lot of kids. Um, and so the thought of, okay, in two months, they're just in denial sometimes for their whole senior year, and then April kicks in, and they're like, oh, right, I gotta have a plan for next year. And so like LaTanya talked about, we're kind of moved on to other things, but we still need to make sure we're getting this kid through the process, and that's where our tier three supports come in, and we could not do that work without our partnership with uh, Be a Leader and these other uh, organizations. All right, so another, this is, kind of tier two-ish, but we threw this in. Um, we have a great, 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 great partnership with um, Maricopa Community College because PC is our number one um, receiver of our graduating seniors. It will flip to ASU very soon. But we have Maricopa Enrollment Day, and that's coming up for us. So what they do, this is in partnership with Gateway, South Mountain, and Phoenix College. So basically the three community colleges that partner with Phoenix Union, where a lot of our kids go. They take the day, April 5th this year and April 12th, um, they take the day, they shut down their enrollment center, and it's only Phoenix Union kids. This is brought to you by Thriving Together because the, you know, getting transportation somewhere is, whew, it's a struggle, I just learned. It's a, it's a real struggle. 
So they pay for the buses for us. Um, great, great, great partnerships. We were prepared, you know, to keep this going. If there's no buses, we're prepared to use school vans and kind of do a circulator back and forth all day. Um, what we do is they go, if they need to be Accuplace or tested, that happens with developmental ed happening at Maricopa, there's gonna, we're gonna see less kids needing to be tested. Um, they go get advisement, any financial aid help that needs to still take place. And then they get their classes. They're walking out with IDs and schedules and, and ready to go. And it's so exciting. Um, the, I was a counselor at North last year, so I didn't get to go to one of the days because you know, the life of a counselor, sometimes you can't go to every event. I sent, and I was the ESS counselor, so I sent, a, I sent some um, kids in special education off and they came back so excited with their PCIDs and schedules in hand. Um, it, it's really, really great. And it gives them that feel for the community college because, you know, there's not that, there's no really touring of the community college, you kind of just go. So it gives them that community college feel. So when we look at the event that we did last year, and then when PC gave us, was it their 40, when they do their 45th day, 100% of our students that participated in the enrollment day were enrolled at the community college the fall. So it works when you provide that support and opportunity for your students. Um, it is a lot of work, it's a lot of coordination, but the results show that it's worth the time and the effort and the money. And so you can't argue with 100%. Like, that's great. They showed up, and they were still there. And sometimes, you know, they get stuck in that process. If, you know, sometimes at the community college, it's a little wonky in terms of financial aid or verification or getting the money, and then students just don't go. Um, and so and it's because they just they feel frustrated. Um, they thought they had everything done, and so then what we can do is still provide that support for them, but it's this great partnership with our community colleges who say, like, we'll shut down for the day because then we won't have, um, I mean, 100 kids coming in randomly these times and, and in the month of <laughs> August and, and it, when it's really crowded, so we can know that they're done and ready to go. My greatest advice, because I'm not one that likes to ask for things, my greatest advice, I think I've learned this a lot in three months, is if you want to try something, just ask somebody. So ask your community college, hey, do you think you could do that? And let them take that back and sit on it, because I, I get amazed by PC every day when I say, I want to try something, and they're like, all right, shoot it to me. <laughs> so just ask. I mean, what's, the worst thing they can say is no, and you just think about it and ask again after that. I think that's true. As we work with Kristen at ASU in admissions, she says um, with ASU, there's, they will still work a lot in the application process through the spring, but schools are not taking advantage of those services. And so a lot of kids will think it's too late. They are too late for the Obama, but they can still be CAG eligible in the spring. And so she says she reaches out to schools a lot. Do you want to have a spring uh, application workshop? Do you want that? And schools just don't respond back. So ASU is more than willing to come out and work with schools in the spring. If you can just coordinate the space and the time, they will bring the people. So it's just you know figuring out who those kids are, whatever your system is, whatever data you're using to track your students of where they're going. Um, but just providing the space and the computer lab and they'll bring the people and then they'll do all the work for you. So at that point, we're really just an organizer of the event, but not necessarily walking the kids through, through the step. But she says it's very hard to get um, people to host events in the spring for kids that still wanna go to ASU, but in their mind, it's too late. So somehow, we, if you have that issue on your campus, we, you can bridge that gap with those students. All right, so a glance into the future because I'm, like I said, I'm new to this job and I was giving my bosses in here. She gave me a direct order to make this job my own and kind of figure out what I want to do. So me being a model employee, <laughs> that's, what I, that's exactly what I'm going to do. So a glance in the future, this is where we're headed. I think it's always important to think about where you're headed whenever you're doing something. So 
I'm next year and the campuses are going to make it their own. We're going to do a fall and spring campaign because this is what I know as a counselor. In the First of all, herding, I came from North High School, so herding 545 people to do one thing at the same time takes miracles and prayers and thoughts. So why don't we split this up? We need to make it more meaningful for one, the students, and more meaningful for the staff that has to work it. So in the fall, we're going to focus on our university-bound kids because they are under deadlines for Obama, the Lumberjack. So we're going to, in the fall, focus on everybody who wants to go to the university. In the spring, Amanda said, things get wonky with Maricopa because of systems, with getting caught in verification and you know, a lot of your community college kids in the fall, they're like, I gotta pass econ, miss. I'm, I can't think about the future. I gotta think about this English 7 class here today. So in the spring, February, we're gonna start, we're gonna do another campaign, Maricopa and anybody we missed in the fall because our kids are transient. And so they may have arrived September the 21st and our event was on the 20th, so we missed you and we didn't realize we missed you. <clears throat> so we're gonna do a spring campaign Maricopa and anybody we missed in the fall. We're trying to make apprenticeship connections. We are working with Thriving Together. We are working with um, College Depot, not Trade Depot, Crafter Profession. I have to call them by their real name in public. Mm -hmm. DES, to, because if anybody's ever tried to maneuver the apprenticeship system with a kid, yikes. And their campus is making headway. Camelback has an apprenticeship fair that's really, really well attended, and it's really, really good. So there might be another poster campaign the next time I'm up here talking about, because kids don't know what apprenticeships are. They don't realize you can get paid, get training, while getting credits. I didn't know what that was. So I feel like that's a, um, I think that's something, that's an opportunity for us to get more knowledge to our community, our kids, even to our other educators, because it's just, it's just like a hidden gem. Fast Bend the Fair is something we're going to try with Franklin. Um, I've got to make some contacts there. Franklin uh, Police and Fire is right across the street from the Arizona State Fairgrounds. So what do you need most at the fair? Parking. They have a parking lot. And then so what we're going to do is we're going to have a Saturday where you come do your FAFSA. Here's your ticket to the fair. There's your parking. Have a great day. Just got to, if anybody knows anybody at the State Fair, tell them I'm looking for them because... <laughs> Tell them Latanya's coming to charm them to get some free fare tickets. And then we're going to, I, I want to work harder, and I don't know what this looks like, on parent education, meeting with Be A Leader, always talking with my Be A Leader contacts. We find crazy things when it comes to FAFSA, like people filing wrong, it affects the FAFSA, people not filing taxes at all. People not getting, giving their kids the information, or and I get it. I, I don't think if I had a 17-year-old, I'd be like, here, my taxes go to school today, buddy. Um, not giving the information. So we have to work at educating our parents on why this is important before the senior year, because it's, you know, because some people it takes a little bit longer to get that message across. And if you start that education in August of their senior year, they might not get it until May. So I don't know what that looks like yet. Like I said, open to suggestions, Blakely at Phoenix Union. If you have an idea, I will use it and I will give you credit. Um, so that's what we're going, that's where we're going as a district. That's just a few of the things. Um, I have some wilder, crazier dreams that I don't want to share just yet. I probably should run them across my boss first. Well, why don't you talk about how we're changing up TriU because we're one of the last districts to hold on to the old model. And so that's, I think, fits under your parent education. So TriU, thoughts and prayers right now because this is happening in a month. So TriU for us in Phoenix Union is going regional. So we were holding on to the old model where they come on your campus during advisory, give three presentations, you know, to the three different schools. And they talk about their school for 20 minutes a piece. Open browse fair. I didn't like sitting through it as a counselor, you know, like that. And everybody knows that, you know, going to college, that's a family decision where you pick. It's a fa everything has to involve your parents because this is a big, like, it's your, really your first major life choice. So TriU is going regional in Phoenix Union next month. So we have four sites. The first one will be at Trevor Brown on, on April 3rd, open to the public. So if you're in the Phoenix area and you want to send your kids, send them out. 
we're going to do them in the evening from 6 to 8 so parents can come. So instead of having them during the day, our parent, we all have jobs, so we can't go to our kids' school to go listen about college at 10 in the morning. So we're going to have them at Trevor Brown, North High School, Carl Hayden. I am missing somebody. Betty Fairfax for the South. So they'll be 6 to 8, and they're going to go the first two weeks of April. So please lend me your positive thoughts because one thing about working at district office, like, you can tell people to wreck things and do things, but you don't know they're happening. And so I hope, you know, I'll come back next year with uh, whether Tri-U Regional is great. I know it's going to be. <laughs> So with that, we also target certain students to invite. So we obviously invite the whole community. We invite school-wide, but then students with a 2.8 a two point eight and above GPA are specifically getting a letter sent to them to their house saying, hey, we think you should come to this event. Um, kids really like personal invitations. It works. And so... Um, we utilize that here in, in our district in terms of if we have somebody coming on campus, if you just kind of do a generic sign up and through announcements, like kids don't come. But if you target certain kids based upon whatever data you're collecting and send them an invitation and say, hey, so and so is going to be here today during advisory, we'd love for you to join us. Kids like think that's really special and they, they really react well to that. And the Piggy off, piggyback off that, I always make them feel special. So the letter is going to open with, congratulations on your academic achievements. And they're going to be like, Dr. Gaston knows me, and he knows that I'm doing well. <laughs> and then we have stats about scholarships, you know, to catch the eye, like, can I win one of these scholarships? So if you personalize it as much as you can in a letter, I know that, you know, caseloads are so high, you can't be like, dear Johnny, dear Sue. So personalize it as more as most you can because the one thing about the teenage brain, they think they're unique and special. That's just a part of development. So if you personalize it, they'll be like, Dr. Gaston realizes that I'm doing well, so I'm going to this event. One thing I realized we didn't put into our tier one slides is as we do all this work in this senior year, we've really started working on what are we doing in grades 9, 10, and 11 to make sure they're ready for grade 12 in terms of this process. We the the senior year should just be like, okay, here's my list, here's where I want to apply, and here's, I need to do the FAFSA, you know, and there's still some decision making, but if we're still educating in the senior year, we've really, we've missed the mark on it. And so we started a partnership last year with ASU where um, every semester our ninth graders got a letter from ASU and Phoenix Union. Um, that was geared towards um, where they are falling um, academically. So at the beginning of the year, they all got one that said, basically, congratulations, you're, you're on track to go to college, because they hadn't done anything yet, right? So you, you're not falling behind, you're there. And so all the freshmen got that letter. After grades came out, first semester, we had three different letters that went out. Students that had A's and B's, students that had uh, C's, and then students who were failing classes. And those letters were specific based upon that and action steps that they could currently take. If you're an A and B student, congratulations, here's what you need to start thinking about. And there were specific things that ASU was offering that they promoted and then specific things that they should be doing on their campus. If they got the C letter, it was the same kind of thing. Still start exploring your options for after high school, but you might want to go to tutoring. You might need to do this or might need to connect with your advisory teacher to travel for tutoring during advisory. So specific things they could do on their campus. And if they had failed classes, you know, it was that Still an encouraging letter, but you know what? You, you, you want to get take care of this now. So are you going to go to summer school? Um, are you going to start to go to tutoring? Is, is attendance a problem? Check in with your counselor. And so those letters came, uh, they get one in the fall and then one in the spring. And so this year, those letters all went out to our current ninth graders and 10th graders. So they'll continue to get those letters as they move on through their experience in Phoenix Union to let them know where they are in that process and other supports that are there for them to do that. And so it is a joint letter signed by our superintendent and um, by uh, ASU. And so the kids really like that. We've, we've mailed them home and, and they come home and they, you know, they bring the letter to school and they're excited because we don't get a lot of mail 
nowadays. And if we do, it's not like fun mail or anything exciting. And so the kids have really um, responded well to this. They, they'll bring it into the counselor like, Miss, what's this? Like, well, did, did you read it? You need, first read it. Hey, did you read it? You know, and so um, it's just a really, I think, a great uh, partnership that we have with them that you could do with whatever your local, you know, school is in your area or something similar just with your, within your own school, maybe not even partnering with a with a university, but hey, you're on track, or hey, this is what you need um, to be doing. And it doesn't have personalized student information on it. It just is generic to A's and B's, C's, and then if they have failed. So there is that check-in piece uh, still going home to parents. I think we're open for questions now. So I'm going to have to, I heard you, but I have to repeat the question for the camera for the presentation. So what do we do for students that are undocumented in this, in this FAFSA push so that they don't get lost, right, in the college going initiatives? So there are a couple of things. Um, one thing is we take advantage of the Im Immigrant Scholarship Hustle, which is a different foundation. They will, they will come in and do presentations to your undocumented students. Now, figuring out who is and isn't undocumented is a challenge because you can't ask. And so it usually comes up in conversation and you usually don't find out, I, I've discovered, until your senior year because it's just not something that you talk about. Just, you don't, no kid's gonna march into their counselor's office and, get, and give you something that personal just because. So we do a lot of stuff with Immigrant Scholarship Hustle. We have a teacher at Metro Tech who also will come out and do presentations. Our counselors, we do trainings with them to get them familiar with the scholarships available um, through, you know, through college, we use the College Depot scholarship database because it's the best. <laughs> um, to, you know, DACA eligible scholarships and Dreamer scholarships. And then we, you know, back in, we still do this. We really, really work hard with the privately funded universities. And we will, like if you have a high achiever, we have connections with like St. Mary's University in Texas and ASU is always a great help. <laughs> Grand Canyon, um, as Grand Canyon has grown, Grand Canyon has become more helpful. And so we make those connections um, with the universities to go, hey, we have this suit and they're really great. They have a, we've got an issue, there, there'll be no FAFSA. And so we get, we, we try to get students um, packaged, you know, with the private universities as much as we can. And then we are also, I'm working on some stuff with the tribal colleges because tribal college tuition is cheap for you know for anyone and so I'm working on some stuff with them so that they can come teach classes so more on that to come I just got emails today so I think one thing we did a couple years ago is actually since again we don't ask that question right it's not part of our registration process if they're a citizen or not it doesn't matter to us one way or another but what we did run by campus was just um, you can run through synergy their birth birth country and so for us actually looking at our data and see how many of our kids were actually born out of country and then from there a lot of them are on refugee status so that's a little bit different but then if we look at our students that were Mexico or Central America that might fall under that then those numbers are actually pretty small um, I think we were thinking there were tons and tons and tons but it is a smaller number than we uh, than we actually thought when we actually pulled and looked at the data. But I think it does come down to those individual conversations with your kids and the comfort level they have with you and then the relationship that you've built and then using these other outside sources to connect um, the student. And I, I'm glad you asked that question because we need to add that into tier two <laughs> on our slides because that, that is a big one. And then I came from North High School. What we did, we had the FAFSA Fiesta. 
we're not going to like not say you can't come to our fiesta because you actually really can't fill out a FAFSA. So we did, we had another thing when a kid was like, miss, I can't do this. We would take them and do another presentation. And if you got through the presentation and could show, I found one scholarship that I can apply for, here's your ticket, go to the fiesta. And then we'll follow up with you to make sure you actually applied for the scholarship because we know students. Another great resource for our students that are undocumented is Year Up. So, because they are privately funded, so they, um, a lot of our students tend to do that program, um, and they're very successful there. So, if, uh, if you don't have a partnership with Europe or they're not coming to your school, I would strongly suggest um, reaching out to them. Um, year, year up, year. like Y E A R, like, because you do a year program and then you're out. Oh. <laughs> yeah, and they have great um, business and industry connections. So kids are working at Bank of America. They're working at Wells Fargo. It's, it's, it's amazing. So the kids are getting um, classes through Gateway, and then they're also working at the same time with these companies that support them and then uh, will help them grow as leaders within that organization. It's a great, great program. Yes. The last um, letter that you talked about, is there a way for us to email you and possibly get a sample of what that letter looks like? Yes, yes. Um, Blakely at phoenixunion.org. Oh, it's up there. Yeah. Yeah. The question was the, oh, yeah. the letter and if they could get a sample of what that letter looks like. So, yeah, we're more than happy to share that. Sorry, I forgot to repeat it. Any other questions? I think a, a big thing is that all of these things are trial and error, right? It's, we, we tell you this is how great it is and how it's working, but things are trial and error on your campuses. And you find things that work and you find things that don't. And that's okay. You could have an event and it could be a bust. But that doesn't mean that you don't try something new the next time. Or, like we've been doing our campaigns, you know, all in the fall, and now we're trying to think, you know, that's not bad that what we've been doing, but maybe we should look at this idea of separating because the community college application is not ready in the fall. So kids were like spinning their wheels. They're filling out a paper application to give back to the rep who's then taking it back, and then it's like creating a whole other work for the student that it's not efficient or effective. And so it's hard for us to say, okay, we have this and it's working well, but we know if we split it can be done a little bit better and easier for the student, even if it creates more work for us, which is hard then to message out and get people on board. It doesn't mean that what we were doing in the, wrong, in the past was wrong. It just means that things evolve and change, and we need to evolve and change with them. Um, I think about, I've been out of the classroom for, uh, 15 years now, but I was just moving and I had all these notebooks of stuff I used to teach. And I thought, A, why do I still have those? I'm not going back to teaching middle school English. Uh, but B, even if I were to go back, all of that stuff is not good. It's not good anymore. And it doesn't mean it was bad then. It just means it's not good or appropriate now. And I was going to piggyback on the two campaigns thing. If um, any of you guys are f familiar with the Maricopa and the MEID, there is no greater fun than doing next steps with the kid. I don't know my MEID. I don't even know where I apply, miss. Because it was in October and their heart and their mind wasn't ready yet for whatever reason. You know, kids get there when they get there. And we just have to be ready when they're ready. So that's another reason because that would, as a counselor, that would drive me crazy. I'm like, we did all that work in September for you not to remember. And so what I always tell myself, the kids are changing. We got to change with them and that we have to be comfortable being uncomfortable. So trying new things, it's going to be uncomfortable. Try you has been very uncomfortable for me, but I have to be comfortable with that because we're trying something new and it's going to hopefully benefit our community. And like I told the counseling department, because they were like, what if it doesn't work? And I'm going to make some adjustments and try it again until it works. And so that's what I encourage you. So if your event falls flat, figure out, make some adjustments, try it again until it works. You'll get there. I, I think that's it. Any other questions? Any other questions? Comments? Concern? <eah. Comments? <laughs> All right. Thank, Thank you. you.